Welcome to our lesson on plotting histograms. So we're going to plot a histogram from a group data table. And we can see in this group data table that we have different class widths for time. So in our first row, we have a class width of 10 minutes. In our second row, we've got another 10 minutes, which is a difference between 20 and 10. However, in our third and fourth row, we've got a difference of five minutes. And in our final row, a difference of 20 minutes. So because we have an unequal class width, we need to show the frequency as an area rather than a height like we would normally do in a bar chart. And the area will be made up of the width, which is measured in time, and the height, which is measured in frequency density. So to work out the frequency, which will work out as an area, as a product of the frequency density and time, which is measured in minutes. So now we need to work out the height of our bars, which is the frequency density. And we can work this out by rearranging this formula, where the frequency density is equal to the frequency divided by the time. And the time is the class width. So we'll put that in here. So now I'm going to begin by working out the frequency density for each group. So the frequency density is the frequency, which is eight, divided by the class width of the time, which is 10, then this is 0 0.8. For our next one, we have a frequency of 16, divided by 10, which is 1.6. And for our third one, we've got a frequency of 15, now divided by a class width of five, which is three. And now we have 12 divided by five, which is 2.4. And finally, six divided by 20, which is 0 0.3. We can see that our time scale goes from zero to 50, which I can mark along the horizontal axis. So I can mark off every 10 seconds. And our frequency density goes up to three, which is here. So I can have one, two, and three. And now I can begin to draw our bars. So our first bar is a frequency density of 0 0.8 and a class width of 10, starting from zero. Our second bar goes from 10 to 20 with a frequency density of 1.6. And next, we go from 20 to 25 with a frequency density of 3. And then from 20 to 30 with a frequency density of 2.4. And finally, from 30 to 50 with a frequency density of 0.3. So here we have our completed histogram for this group data table. Okay, let's try one more question. So we're told that a chicken farmer is collecting information about the weights in grams of eggs produced by his chickens and is recorded with data in a grouped data table which you can see here. Do you want to try and use this table to create a histogram? You can pause the video and resume it when you're ready. So again we measure the frequency as an area because the class widths are not equal and this will be a product of the weight which is in grams multiplied by the height which is frequency density. And to work out the frequency density, we divide the frequency by the class width of a weight. For our first group, we have a frequency of 12 divided by 20, which is 0.6. And for the next one, we have 20 divided by 10, which is a frequency density of 2. And for our third one, 17 divided by 10, which gives us 1.7. And then 6 divided by 15 which gives us a frequency density of 0.4. So now we'll label our horizontal axis, where we can start at 10 and end at 80. And for our frequency density, we'll go up to 2. And we can do this in intervals of 0.5. So between 20 to 40, we've got a frequency density of 0.6. And from 40 to 50, a frequency density of 2. And from 50 to 60, we go up to 1.7. And then finally, from 60 to 75, we go up to 0.4. Okay, thank you for watching, and I hope you found that useful. Thanks again, and take care.